you lead, the Seven Kingdoms will follow. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom has been a shockingly controversial sequel. One would think that because it's following up on a billion dollar smash and reuniting a well-loved director in James Wan with a well-loved leading man in Jason Momoa, it would have been a slam dunk. But the film has faced a staggering amount of behind the scenes drama, including reshoots, release date delays, and lousy test screenings, which amazingly began two years ago. Plus it's been through no less than three studio regimes and that's not even counting the fact that one of the stars, Amber Heard, has been seemingly cancelled by an angry public following the civil trial with Johnny Depp. Plus, a new superhero fatigue has set in, resulting in movies like The Flash and The Marvels flopping at the box office. So, how does Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom fare despite all that? Pretty poorly, actually. I was rooting for this movie as I'm fond of James Wan, but whatever magic he brought to the first film, has been scrubbed away in this limp sequel. So in this one, Aquaman finds his peaceful reign as the King of Atlantis, cut short when his former enemy, Black Manta, once again played by Yaha Abdul-Mateen II, is imbued with the power of the evil Black Trident. Bent on destroying Aquaman's family, our hero must turn to an unlikely ally, his half-brother Orm, played by Patrick Wilson. Right from the get-go, you get the sense that you're watching a movie that's been focus grouped to death with having the same lip catching up with me, Aquaman style narration that seems to be a given in superhero movies these days. With it present in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, Shazam, Fury of the Gods and The Flash, as well as Thor, Love and Thunder and God knows how many others. Perhaps a fresh approach is needed. I'm not sure we always need these sequences where it's like, hey, being a superhero is hard. This is what I'm up to. We're just regular guys, just like you. It's all kind of annoying, isn't it? What's wrong with this sequel, though, is how limp and uninspired it all feels with it utterly lacking the charm that made the first movie work so well. That film had just the right amount of silliness, right down to the song choices, which included Depeche Mode and a Pitbull cover of Toto's Africa, which sounds like a terrible choice for a superhero flick, but for some reason or other, actually kind of worked in the world that James Wan was creating. You see, he didn't take it all so seriously, and that vibe allowed us to have as much fun with the world he was making as he did. By contrast, Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom is just another superhero movie with familiar needle drops and some genuinely inane dialogue, mainly from Black Manta who's really been saddled with this terrible dialogue and reinvented as this wisecracking villain that's kind of embarrassing. Jason Momoa of course is a game Arthur Curry, but they also let him cut too loose with the wisecracks, none of which are funny. I mean, he's making like he's Joe Piscopo in like Dead Heat in the 80s. It gets kind of silly. In this one, he's a new dad juggling his infant son with his new duties as the King of Atlantis. And Amber Heard's Mira is around, kinda, in a weird role that feels like it was tacked on to the final cut as if no one knew how much she should actually be in it. So they were covering their bases. It's easy to imagine a shorter version of this movie without Amber Heard at all, although she's pretty prominent in the version that they're releasing to theaters, at times. It's strange because her role feels both more extensive than expected and also totally inconsequential, which is a weird combo, isn't it? But hey, at least she fares better than poor Willem Dafoe as Volko, who's written out in a very, very cheesy offhand way, while Nicole Kidman looks like she only filmed on the movie for a couple of days. And it's kind of hilarious to see her playing Patrick Wilson's mom, despite only being like three or four years older than him. If Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom works at all, it's due to Patrick Wilson, who switches from being an antagonist this time to more of an anti-hero. Juan promised this would be the tango and cash of superhero movies, but he doesn't deliver. Momoa gets the chance to crack wise and make jokes, but Wilson mostly has to play his part straight, as he's supposed to be regal, being a former king. There should have been more of an emotional core to the relationship and some actual stakes, but this does the typical superhero thing, you know, where it looks like people are dead or people are gonna die and then 10 minutes later they're back and they're fine. There's no edge to it whatsoever and if there was, it was definitely sanded off in the reshoots. The CGI also seems notably weaker this time with the underwater hair particularly annoying in a way it wasn't in the first film. Part of this may be due to the fact that Aquaman The Lost Kingdom has the misfortune of coming out so hot on the heels of Avatar The Way of Water, which really changed the way underwater sequences could look on screen, especially in a CGI environment, making what's on screen here seem archaic by comparison. 
In the end, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom feels like a dull slog, with action sequences that lack any bite and a complex mythology that's really hard to invest in as it feels so tacked on and haphazard. It seems to be placing a bow on the DCEU with an ending that seems like a bit of a farewell to this era of DC movies, but it ends with a whimper rather than with a bang. This is a disappointing follow-up to a pretty excellent superhero movie. Hopefully James Wan licks his wounds and returns to making quirky, weird horror movies, a genre he seems much, much happier in. I give this an extremely disappointing 5 out of 10. You know how to ride one of these? Are you kidding? I don't know what the hell it is! Yeah!